Hey you bookish bards and bardettes, welcome back to I Cast Vicious Mockery. I'm Austin. I'm Matt and I feel powerful. What? Why do you feel powerful? I'm sitting a little bit higher up today. There's like <laughs> a cushion thing under here. You know, you could just raise the... Uh, yeah, chair. but I feel powerful, raised up. <laughs> like my upper back is like up against the headrest. Mm-hmm. It makes, yeah, me, so makes actually, me feel big. <laughs> This is a thing that gets me with the design of chairs. Okay. Um, they're all designed for people who are shaped like the letter C. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So they want you to sit. They push your lumbar out first. Uh-huh. So already that's like kind of weird. And then they have a headrest. So you're like this. <laughs> I guess it's not the letter C. It's like a question mark. It's like the top of a question mark. Yeah. It's not good. Well, you need that lumbar support. Why? That's what I've heard. You just put your lumbar straight up and down, and it doesn't need support it. That's what everybody says. You need to support your scapula. Something I'm not really sure exactly where it is, but that I know of because of Jimmy Neutron. Yeah. It's your shoulder blade. Oh. Yeah. My scapula. My scapula. <laughs> All right, so uh, I have a book review. Oh, it's not a book recommendation this time. I wish it could be a recommendation. I'll show you the book. How close should I get it to the camera? So this is my beat up advanced reader copy of Relentless by R.A. Salvatore. I don't know actually how he says his last name. Actually, I don't know if it's a guy or not. I think so because he writes like a guy. But I'm not (laughs) sure. All right, hot takes already. Sure, yeah, awesome. No, that's like a well-studied, well-established thing. Oh, really, guys? Like there, there are you can purposely write as a girl or a guy. Uh, like you can you can disguise your writing, but if you just go based on each person's individual normal writing, most people can be dis- like you can distinguish most people's. I guess gender. I don't know if it's gender or what that you're distinguishing. But <laughs> in this case, you could you could tell like this is probably a dude. Got it. Yeah. Didn't know that. Yeah. Uh it's I mean a, it makes sense, but I didn't know that. Yeah. Um it's it's really weird that you could tell that. But anyway, um so this book is in a series about Drizzt who is a character in the Forgotten Realms. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, Wait, is that where Sword Coast is? Yeah. Yeah, the Sword Coast is... Anyway, so he's a a dark elf from the Underdark, from Menzo Baranzan. Menzo Baranzan. Anyway, the, like, dark elf city. In the underdark, mm-hmm. um, and this this book is about like an important point in the lives of many characters related to him. First off, he is not in the book. This isn't a book about Drizzt. It's a Drizzt novel, but it's only about characters who are like related to him. Um, Interesting. Yeah, because he's dead in this book. Um, Got it. So he's he's like n- nowhere to be found. Uh, so that's just how it is, you know. Um, there are a lot of characters in here. So maybe this book would make more sense for somebody who has read all of the Drizzt books. But there's also another issue with it, which is that um, while it shows important events in the world and in the individual characters' lives for some of the characters, um, it doesn't make them all that exciting. The most exciting thing was the very last page of the book, the very... The last two paragraphs, a total of two sentences, 
Uh, that was the most exciting part of the book to me. Now, part of it was there were so many characters, it was sometimes hard to follow what was going on at the beginning. Mm-hmm. And, and I really do think that it might have tried to pull in too many, like, you know, they tried to weave too many threads together. Um, but the other issue was sort of that, like, I don't know, the climax itself was leading to like a huge battle scene and it just kind of didn't happen. There was stuff going on with a fire primordial, you know, and it was going to really screw stuff up for it and it didn't really do it. And there was like no reason why they didn't do it or what? what? Yeah, like yeah. it was just like a it was just like a, a thread that was dropped like. All right, we'll pick that up some other time. Almost like the entire book was red herrings. <laughs> it it felt like that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. There was definitely some cool stuff in it. Mm -hmm. I liked the fight scenes were pretty good. Um the way that some of the characters I liked a lot. Uh Jarlaxle who's like a roguey type guy who runs like a thieves guild. Basically I liked him. Um, they, they did intrigue decently well. Uh, better than black widow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that, well, there wasn't a whole lot of spying type stuff though, but that's also not what, not what you'd expect going no, into this. No, you'd not expect a, more like magic like and a fantasy novel type stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and they did that pretty well. But like overall, I would say, I think if you read all of the Drizzt novels, you could read this and enjoy it. I think this was an awful place for me to start with the series. Just terrible. Do you think you you think there's potential that if you read some of the other books and you learned more about the characters in this book, or maybe even more about Drizzt himself, mm -hmm. that you could retroactively appreciate it more? Or does no. it just seem no, it just seems like No, it's like filler. It's filler. <laughs> it's a filler. Yeah, it's like a filler book. Cause because like there's not really any there, like there is a climax and there's a moment that's supposed to feel tense, but none of it does. Right. Well, filler is it is it like filler like anime filler in the sense that it's a closed loop where at the end everything is basically the same as it was in the beginning because it has to be. I don't know if it has to be because I don't know what's after this. Right. Cuz I don't know what's before it or after it. But and now I do actually I do know what's before it now a lot cuz they mm -hmm. talk about that a lot. Um but I don't know what's after it. And so, but for the most part, everybody is in the same position where they were when they started or slightly better. All right. <laughs> yeah. So uh, there, yeah. there are some like quote unquote big changes, mm -hmm. but they don't feel big as somebody who's not invested in these characters. Like, like some of them had, I would call a major change of heart. But mm -hmm. and they kind of show that through the book because there's some like history stuff in here too, flashbacks to Drizzt's childhood. And they're trying to like build up these characters as like super evil people, then they turn good or things like that. Um, or the other way around. But it's not that, you know, it's like not that hard hitting somehow like it, it feels too i don't know like the characters were all they were super grody and <laughs> just like i didn't like like they they looked gross they felt gross they smelled gross like everything about them was bad and then they turned good and like nothing changed about them they were just like one time like one one day they were like well, it was because of knowledge that they gained, but they were like, oh, I'm I'm good now. And everyone was surprised, like, oh, you're good now, but you were so bad before. And they're like, no, nah, I'm good. And, and, well, and I'm sure it's all kind of subjective anyway. Like what, like, g w like good versus bad. I mean, I don't know how this story frames it. In this case, 
uh, the the bad would be the spider queen Lolf, the yeah, like goddess Lolf, of yeah. chaos. Um, that would be bad. Got it. <laughs> and so not <laughs> believing in that goddess or no, not following that goddess would be good. Well, isn't, isn't Lolf or, or maybe I'm miss, maybe I'm misremembering, but isn't Lolf like the goddess of the drow? Yeah. Right. So like drow are evil in general, Mm -hmm. but, but they don't necessarily have to be, I guess. I mean, they can all make their own decisions, but right. They're, they're, um, mm -hmm. in general, because they do what Lolf wants them to do. Yeah. They do bad things to people and not people. (laughs) (laughs) People and not people. Yeah, exactly. Uh, So yeah, it was, I mean, would I read it again? Probably not, but I don't usually read novels again because I remember everything that happens in them. <laughs> that must so, be some kind of power. I can never remember everything that happens in ever, anything. I uh, well, I remember it. I do usually remember things that I read, um, al- like almost too exactly. But I like if I try to read through it again, I'll be like, oh, this is what happens next. This is what happens. Like sequentially, I can put it back together too easily. So. I don't know. No. Maybe if I went back and read a book that I read years and years and years ago, I might have forgotten it. But for the most part, I remember them. The review I'm really waiting for is for this bookmark. That right, you're complaining so I, got, about. I got bookmarks and <laughs> I used this little dude, which you probably cannot see in the camera. It's whatever. Uh, look at that. It's like that an astronaut a, guy. Yeah, it's a little astronaut bookmark uh, that clips on the page. Yeah, I love that. It sucks. <laughs> That's not a good bookmark. What's wrong with it? All right. So there are a couple things wrong with it. Uh huh. I'll, 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 I'll demonstrate as, as I describe what's going on here. So first off, how many pages do you clip with this thing? Do you clip one page? One. You clip five pages? Two. As many as you want. You could do want. as many as you want. So first of all, it's ambiguous. That's that's not <laughs> Second all right. of all, it comes a little too tight, so I had to loosen it up by pushing it apart a little bit. Um, but when it comes too tight like that, and you try to clip it on the pages, his little appendages get stuck. He's like got all these angles where the page can get stuck as you're trying to put him on the page. That's it's, not good. It's definitely not a quick a quick uh Yeah, quick you don't mark. just put it on and go. Uh Next, though, too, he does bend the pages. It like he causes all these. You could see on the top of the book. You could probably tell which yeah, pages oh, yeah. I've bookmarked. Oh yeah, I can. Um. And and yeah, I don't like that. So I kept using it because I mean, this is just. It's not like a super. It was already a little messed up when I got this copy of the book. It had been sitting in the bookstore where I worked for a couple months before I worked there. Because it's from June of 2020. So oh, it had already been there for a few months. And then I picked it up a couple months after I started working there almost, I think. So it was a little it was a little worse for wear anyway. Now, these bookmarks do this so much better. Check this thing out. Do you see these? These uh, There are plenty of these, these little magnetic ones that clip on. Mm-hmm. They're perfect. They go around the page just like that. They just clip. It's not like a like a snap in or something. It's just magnets touch. Just put it together like that. Super easy, super fast. You can these ones have a little arrow. You can point to which line you're on. I don't do that because, again, I remember everything I've read. So I could just look at the page and be like, I'm here. But. Some people would do that, right? Like they would prefer that way. So mm-hmm. that's pretty cool. I would say if you're going to get any bookmarks, as you can see, three of these have been deployed already. <laughs> They're in books right now. I'm loving them. They've been deployed. Yeah. Yes. The military. These do not mess up your books. This guy does. Even though it's cuter. It's much cuter to have an astronaut bookmark. And it's super fancy looking. It's not. It's not better. 
The astronaut bookmark is for when you plan on achieving some kind of meet cute at a coffee shop. Like you're reading your book and you've got the cute little bookmark. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's the, it's the conversation starter, you know, the brunette girl like pushes her hair out of her eyes and yeah, you know, glances and over she, like, and adjusts her beanie. Right. Yeah. And then she, uh, takes her thick rimmed glasses and takes those off and puts on her wire rim, wire rimmed glasses mm-hmm. that yeah. she uses for inside coffee shops only. <laughs> she pulls out her, her, uh, what's that called? iPhone S the small one. Oh yeah. 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 Or, uh, SE? The, the, the color. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the five C. The, yeah. The, yeah. Okay. So yeah. she pulls out her small iPhone though. Uh, and um, takes a quick selfie, but then she pulls out her Polaroid camera and then takes a picture in the, of the coffee shop. And then, like, she starts to do this, you know, with the, she shakes the Polaroid picture because you're supposed to do that, I'm sure. <laughs> and she hands it to the person at the register and they already had her drink ready for her and they trade it off. And she goes over it. <laughs> okay, says, you're, you're spinning too much of what? a yarn here. <laughs> That's what this book was like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got me. Oh, you got me. All right, uh, sorry. Okay, no, that's that's good. No, that's good. That's good. Um, because I want to talk about yeah romance <gasps> in D anD. d yeah, because yeah, we keep trying to hook up Carly's character with everybody. Well, so <laughs> <laughs> I think she's cool with it, though. She is. Uh, so so that but that's like the important thing. But we've talked about this before, I think. Um, but when you are starting a campaign with a group of people, you it's it it really is a good idea, I think, to be very clear and upfront about what everybody's okay with and what they're not. Yeah. Like you, you want to, you want to say, first of all, for everybody is romance on the table with care, like between characters. Right. Exactly. Uh, you could probably split that up with between players and NPCs and between mm-hmm. players and players with NPCs. You can do whatever you want. I think you're allowed to like, you're allowed to take two NPCs and they meet and they date. Sure, because, because they're all me. Yeah, in this instance of the yeah. game that we and play, that would be. I think it would be hilarious to go to a wedding and you're marrying yourself. The, the I want that to happen in a campaign. Okay, just saying. Well, you might have to put some stuff in motion. Okay, <laughs> uh, I between some NPCs. in this campaign, that's not exactly the kind of thing Liam can set in motion. But there are some people who watch this show that play in this game mm-hmm. that might be more willing to do that. I'm just saying I don't know if Liam's capable. Oh, capable. Okay. I yeah. can try to make him do it. I just don't know if he can. I just don't know. If he can. Uh, so, but like, so for example, for me, like player to NPC, I, I'm okay with, I'm okay with it. Mm-hmm. I'm okay with it, really. Um, yeah. I think it's a little easier from the DM's perspective too, because you're not like, I'm, I'm not this character and I'm like, these aren't all you, you know, you're not playing a million different mats, right? They're, they're just like all random people. They all have to be as different as you can make them in your head. But I do, as somebody who likes to, to act and, and that kind of thing, uh, I, I do get into the characters. Uh, I like to get into the characters when I play them. Um, and I'm I I I would say that I'm about just as invested in the lives and goings on and everything of the characters that I portray as you guys are with yours. Um, uh, no, because I'm not. Well, okay, because he's sure. a separate thing from me. Yeah, so he's like he can do whatever he wants to do. So, like for example, I I um. I was really kind of, kind of sad. I I had this whole, um, I had this whole backstory and this whole motivation and this whole 
uh, story that that was supposed to be emotional and evoke like a lot of a lot of conflicting feelings from from you guys, the players, mm-hmm. uh, about Ramses. Uh, oh, okay, yeah, but. But so so when he when he died when he went unconscious, um, I I had like a sort of like a almost wait. So like, he's not dead. Dead. We, we haven't confirmed his death. Hold on a second. <laughs> Let me finish my thought here. I wasn't there during that session. Oh, that's right. You weren't there during the set. I forgot. This is all news to me. I forgot you weren't there. Okay, keep going. Uh, uh, yeah, that's right. You weren't there, so you don't you don't know about this. No. Uh, so, um, well, I I, I went. I, I started doing sort of like a like a death speech, you know, like a like a dying breath, like mm-hmm. sort of monologue. Um, and, and the characters were like, oh, he's still alive. Heck, dad, I'm going to kill him. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to kill him right now. <laughs> Do we leave that in now? Is that fine? Should I don't know. I-, I don't care. Uh, we, we had a thing where we weren't supposed to swear on the show, but uh, it's fine. I, I don't know. I don't know what you want to do with that. <laughs> uh, say heck. Heck. This is going to be fun. Okay, cool. <laughs> 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 Uh, anyway, so, and then they were like, well, I just kill him. I kill him now. Uh, like before, before he even really said anything Mm -hmm. really interesting. And that made me sad. I was like, I was like, ah, man, like I really wanted to do that. Like I really wanted to have, he did have his chance to talk to the party though. He did. Yeah. But this was, this was contextual though. Mm -hmm. Like he wouldn't, he wouldn't have talked about any of this stuff out of context okay that's fair um so it, you know it and and like boohoo for me he was a terrible awful person like yeah he he probably did some of the worst stuff to the party that they've experienced so far so uh, far right exactly um so i get that i get that from their perspective mm-hmm. um so th- that part of, that's part of the reason why I tried so hard to make it so that the rest of them escaped. Mm-hmm. Which you weren't there for nope. that whole session, so you don't really know about that. But the everybody else who was involved in that operation, and to bring everybody up to speed, they had a firearms manufacturing operation. Mm-hmm. They were using one of the player characters' son mm-hmm. as the like, sort of the brains, like the the engineer, the guy who was making the hardware under the guise that it was some government sanctioned organization. Um, and there was enough naivete there with him that he sort of trusted and believed that that was the case. Um. So, so to, to be clear, he wasn't like being held there against his will and, um, could have left at any time in his mind, at least. Right. Yeah. Uh, not in reality, but he felt that way. May, may have gotten turned around had he strayed too far. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, uh, there was, so there was that. There was that whole thing, but, but he had a whole crew. He had a lot of people who were in in the process of manufacturing these things. And he had a whole operation planned, but pretty much everybody except for him got away. Mm -hmm. Um, and the party doesn't really know where they went. They, they had, they had a lead to them, but, um, sort of lost track of what happened to them after a certain point. Like you knew that you knew that they got on a ship and you knew that they ported at the same place that, that you guys ported after that. Mm -hmm. Um, but then you also know that they changed ships. You have a vague description of what that ship looked like, the one that they changed into, but, and you got a vague description of which direction they went, 
but you're not sure what, what their heading was. You don't know where they were going. Um, so, Ooh, you don't know what you've got till it's gone. You don't know what you've got till it's gone. Exactly. So anyway, um, the, uh, so I can take a step back from myself and realize that, yeah, the game's not about me, but I I also feel though like I'm a player too. I right. mean, I'm the DM, but I also yeah. am playing the game. Yeah, so like I want to have fun, right? And that was fun for me. <laughs> uh, yeah. In that moment. Um. Now back on sort of the topic of romance. Yeah. So what I, what I guess we're saying there is that, um, well, as you felt, uh, players' emotions become entangled with the characters. Uh, exactly. There's not much you could do about that. They they do. Mm-hmm. Um. So actually, romance in D and D shouldn't be taken too lightly. It's not a decision to just be like, oh yeah, yeah sure, just whatever. Like you can do that depending on the the game and depending on which players and stuff. But some players are going to be a little more invested, and it could affect it could affect actual stuff. Right, right, so, right. Yeah. Um, our group here, I think we're pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> we're we're all pretty stable <laughs> as far as that stuff goes. Yeah, um, yeah. We're 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 like all close friends. We all yeah, kind of trust each other. We've all got good other. arrangements, I think, right. uh, where nobody's going to mess stuff up with anybody. Um, and also, our characters are just not compatible with each other, right? But like player and player romance is definitely a thing in D anD D. Yeah, um, and and it's it's totally fine as long yeah. as it's not um, taken that step too far. Right, right. Well, the, the the key, I think, is to decide beforehand what's on the table, like what's allowed. Exactly. Um, but also to remember that all relationships start, they, they all feel the same as like a romance at the beginning, as far as I can tell. Um, uh, it's just different, you know, levels of it, different... Uh, Mm, I guess you feel it in slightly different places, but you're always like you're wondering where do I stand with this person, and you're trying to test those limits, right? Is is yeah. kind of how it feels. You're like, all right, are we like close friends? Like, sh- like, can I talk about this with them? Like, how close can I get to approaching this very personal topic? What do I like? How do I bring this up? What you know? What kind of things do they want to do with me? Like, do we want to? Do we, are we are we going on a vacation together? Beach episode. Beach episode. <laughs> are we, you know like are we, right. like like how much time am I willing to give them? How much time are they willing to give me? Like what are we like? You're trying to figure out where you're where you stand with this person. Right. Exactly. And it can be sticky. It's a sticky situation. Mm-hmm. So the only romance that really we've seen so far, sort of. Um, is Saren and Raita. Saren and Ember. <laughs> oh, and Ember, right. Yeah. Uh, and that's and that's a cool... That it was, uh, we should say, the only attempt at romance. Right, attempt, because they're really... Yeah. Nothing, nothing has come about well, it. The, the only, so yeah, the only one of those relationships that you, that I think, had we, like, now we know how it went, mm-hmm. but at the beginning, we... You know, you you would have suspected, oh, this could turn into, ooh, like maybe a, like a, some sort of pair relationship type deal. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, at, at, by the end of it, we knew, oh, well, that's not how this is going to work for at least one of them. <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, I, I think that. Um, like I said, I, I think that all relationships kind of start out the same way. Uh, and very quickly, most of them end up not being a romance, you know, like you could label it as not that same thing. Uh, but I mean, that's where a bromance comes in. Bromance. That's where a bromance comes in. There you go. Well, yeah, I've had those like for real. Real bromance is a great thing. 
Do you it know is. about have you you've had this? Oh sure. Yes. Oh yeah. And, and it's just like when you meet a new friend and you start to click. Yeah. Right? And things like start picking up some steam and you're like, I have a friend now. Like yeah. this was an acquaintance, but now we're like we're pals. Like, yeah, we're like close friends. This is a real thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I, you know, that is uh yeah, I think that's a crucial, crucial element in D and D is to have bromance has to be on the table. It doesn't have to turn into romance, but it's got to at least be bromance. There has to be a word for that. That is, let's just say bromance is gender neutral. Let's just do that. It, it is. Yeah, I it think, is. I, would I think say it's so. fair to say you can be a guy and a girl. Well, you can be whatever. And have a bromance. Because bro, because bromance is already like making fun of dudes who are like getting too close to each other too fast or something. Like that's already yeah. kind of the idea is to tease them about it. Mm -hmm. Um, in the way that you would tease a child about liking girls. Y yeah, you know what exactly. I mean. Like a, like yeah. a kid, like a yeah. little boy about liking girls, like oh or whatever. Your little um, girlfriend, huh? Yeah, yeah. The, bromance is kind of the same type of word, so we can already use it for whatever we want. <laughs> Absolutely. And so I, I think that has to be on the table and, and transitioning too. Yeah. And again, we, we've talked about a lot of these things on the show before. Mm -hmm. And I think that I'm reaching a little bit more like new insights for, for some of this. So yeah. I think it's worth exploring again. Awesome. But, um, because one of the things we talked about before is the relationship between stats and actually what the players themselves are doing right y you know what i mean so the yeah. physical ones are easy to role play because you just describe what they do and they're strong and they're fast and they're tough and all that stuff mm -hmm. and that's easy to describe and imagine but it's a lot harder to role play being really intelligent or role play being really charismatic. Although, if you don't feel that way, I did do the really intelligent one last time <laughs> in the last session. You did, and and <laughs> and it actually worked out. It worked per perfectly. Like yeah. that—that's, I think, a great example of how to do that in yeah. D anD D. And that—that's something to keep in mind when you're in the situations like this, though, right? Is like, mm -hmm. I don't know maybe how like i'm not so great with girls but maybe my character has 20 charisma <laughs> you know yeah, like yeah so maybe this should be going a lot more smoothly for them but at the same time for when when you get to the point where you have something that you can call romance i don't think that the stats in D, D apply exactly okay that's what i was going to say too i was going to say that Romance is different because a 20 charisma score, like when it comes to romance in D&D, &D, mm -hmm. I don't think you should be able to roll the dice and say like, okay, they're into you. Well, necessarily no, they're so just like with the, <laughs> just like with the stealth missions mm -hmm. and the different levels of alertness, there are different levels of into you. Right. Exactly. And the first couple of them, I, I think you should be able to put a spell on somebody. I think you should be able to uh, charm them with, you know, persuasion or deception or whatever. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Intimidation would work on some people, too. Yep. Yeah. Some real subs. Saren should try that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Cool. cool. Um, yeah. Remember to hit that like button. <laughs> Smash that Smash like button. Smash that like button, guys. Uh, no. Uh, so. <laughs> Well, yeah, actually, though, depending on who you're talking to, like if you find the right approach to use, I think you should be able to skip to a little bit further down the line. But there's like romance doesn't. Um, if you're doing it all with a potion, if you give them an aphrodisiac and it like works and they're quote unquote in love with you, um, there should be consequences to that. Right that that's not yeah, yeah that's not yeah, like, like a, that's not a free thing right exactly so there's always that joke of people like seducing the dragon or whatever like the bard seduced the dragon right you know and it happens in shrek but um and i think that seduction specifically mm -hmm. 
is before romance. Like it, it's one of those things that is within reach by magic, by persuasion, by those sorts of things. I think sure. I think you could be a pickup artist in D and D, right? Yeah, and you could you could go and you could neg somebody and use that. You could roll dice for that and see how it does <laughs> and like whatever you know. Um, I, I think that that's all good, and you could, but that that's not. Let's build a relationship. That's transactional. That's I want this from you, right? And, but uh, so here's a th- so you can pay with magic or whatever to get that from them food food for thought here Mm -hmm. um what do you think about this is sort of a double-edged sword what do you think about just the concept that the dm can decide that a certain person or creature or whatever just isn't that into humans or dwarves well something like that i'm gonna be honest i wouldn't be very into a dwarven woman like if you went by the Tolkien-esque description. Right. Exactly. Because Beard's already going to beard, nix beard. that for me. Yeah, that's how I feel too. Um, so, so like, what if, but what if they have like 20 charisma? And, you know, there's some roles there. Like what? Well, so. See, that's the thing. I mean, for me personally, as human me, married human me. Mm-hmm. Show, show my wedding ring here. Yeah, hell yeah. Here um, I mean, you can't really seduce me. Period. Right, like it, it, it's not a thing that can be done. Um, not even my wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's oh, what dang. marriage does. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> No, but like, like it's it's just not a not an option for me. It's not like a choice where I have to fight against it. It's just like by default. No, that's easy, easy choice. Um, so I guess yeah, I guess characters have an on off switch there, right? Right. Like I guess they they can have that. Yeah, I just don't want to give. I, I don't want to give the ammunition. I don't want to give the impression that a DM should just always be like, no, they're not that into you. It doesn't work. But I think you should have your characters be. I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to say they should be one notch. Easier than you feel like they should be maybe as a DM. Okay. Yeah. Like if you, if you're thinking like absolutely no way, maybe it should be like there is when hell freezes over. There is something. Yeah, when hell (laughs) freezes over and then the player characters, they can freeze hell over. Yeah. (laughs) Like, it's going to be hard. You're going to be high level when they do it, but it could happen. (laughs) But it could happen, right. Right. So, um, yeah, like, I I think you should, most characters should be maybe open. But, like, the other thing is there are consequences to it, too. So, like, if you, if they push that hard for something like that right like if they if they use magic and things like that you know it's gonna it's gonna cause problems and they have to know that as a player going into it yeah uh i i had like a i'm having like brain flashbacks brain flashbacks they're all in my brain I wish I could put them on the screen, but I can't, uh, of, of like, so sort of going back. So, so, so let's talk, we're talking about charisma right now. Let's talk like wisdom, intelligence, like yeah. those two stats for a second here. Yep. I am really disinclined. Is that a word? I don't know if that's a word. Yep. I, I'm really disinclined to have to allow somebody to just roll a dice to think of the best strategy you know what i mean right like like okay this intelligence check determines if i can figure out the best strategy or not right that's not fun i don't think that's fun right uh because i would be much more willing to reward players who come up with a good strategy even if it doesn't even if it doesn't work out even if they don't execute it very well or something 
uh, if somebody, if a, the players come up with a good plan and, mm-hmm. and, um, go to follow through with it, I will, I will reward that all day long. Now, would you like, if they start to come up with this plan, mm-hmm. would you then say that could work, make an intelligence check? Like, would you, would you, would you, would you give them something like that? Like maybe I, okay. Uh, yeah. I would do it that way. If they came up with a plan, I might, yeah, I might have them make an intelligence check to see if they can ascertain whether or not it's actually a good idea. Well, what about, um, you're not so sure it will work, but they rolled high enough on intelligence that like, like out of all the plans, they picked the best one that they came up with or whatever, or maybe the coolest. I don't know. They roll intelligence and it's like, all right, this partially determines how how successful the plan will be. Yeah, or or maybe it might even determine how the encounter will be set up. I might change the way the encounter is set up so that that plan works better. Right, exactly. Than it would have otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. And that see there it is. That's it. Mhm. So you make the plan, right? That's player brain. Mhm. But then that's when the roles come in. Right, right. and that determines the world's brain, right? Like what's going to happen in here. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. I like exactly. that. Exactly. So, but here's the thing about that too, though. Mm-hmm. So I would like to do that. Yeah. Um, but there are some players I know that, uh, have a distrust of me. They see me as the enemy because I, which, pl- you are. which I am, I play all the bad guys. Right. Yeah. But to the point where they don't want to discuss any plans in front of me and only want to present the plans as they happen. Yeah. But if they do that, if I don't know what their plan is, then I can't help them either. And, and in fact, my only inclination is to present more obstacles. Right. Because I don't really know where they're going with it. Which is fun to be, to be clear. Matt is talking about me. No, I'm not actually. What? That's, but, I started an entire discord. That is true. Channel. That Just is true. That. Uh, he he did he did invite wait, hold on. Not only he invited me to a Discord channel yeah. that has a general chat uh-huh. and the only other chat in it is one that I don't have access to right. <laughs> and can't see. Yeah. That is the player. I, I, I might make other ones, but actually I was thinking we might just want to set up a channel. For um, each group, you mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that's probably a good idea. Because um I do love the other group's input. Uh I think it's really funny when Paul sends a SpongeBob meme in response to something that I write. I just yeah. don't want them to feel like they have to get pinged every time I write something in the chat. Yeah. You know, so I, I, I want mean. them to be able to shut off the notifications for, you know, our group. But um, you also want them to be able to yeah. participate. Yeah, in, exactly. In it's discussions. Like it's, I want it to be optional. And by the way, that's why I gave you guys those um, uh, sending stones. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that you guys can, can, you guys can have communication with each other. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, it's, it's like fair game. Like anybody can take the sending stone and ask to be handed to anybody else. So any character at any time can talk to any other character whenever you guys decide that you want to do that. Um, and I think that that's a good use for discord, mm-hmm. you know, like sending messages through discord discord is the sending stones right <laughs> more, more or less um okay yeah no i think we came up with some good ideas this time mm-hmm. last time we talked about this i'm not sure it really went anywhere but it feels yeah. like it went somewhere today yeah uh was there something else i wanted to cover um all right so first keep the players emotions out of it mm, yeah that's good uh, other stuff about romance though is, um, if it is on the table, uh, you've got to remember that sometimes it doesn't work out. That's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, um, and, so and be ready for that. That can be an interesting story too. And again, I'm all about story mm-hmm. me personally. Um, that's a great, st- that can be a good story too. The relationship that doesn't work out. And sometimes you're better off that it doesn't work out. Right. Um, uh, whenever I get sad about relationship kind of stuff, I, I watch 500 Days of Summer. And it's kind of a cheesy movie, but uh, it makes me feel better. <laughs> I 
I haven't seen it. You haven't seen it? Nope. Um, all right. Well, I won't spoil it for you. Is that you. the Adam Sandler one where he keeps, no, where the girl keeps forgetting no, who he is? No, that's, um, you're thinking of, uh, nope, don't remember what that one's called. <laughs> I don't mm-hmm. remember, but I know, I know what you're talking about. I just don't uh, remember what it's called. Um, no, it's the one with, uh, uh, the Zoe Deschanel, one of the Deschanel. Zoe, yeah. Zoe, <laughs> Zoe Deschanel. Yeah, Z-O-O-E-Y. Yeah, so. Zoe, yeah. Yeah. Uh, one of the Deschanel, was it Zoe Deschanel? I don't remember which one it was. Is there another one? Yeah, they're like sisters. What? Yeah, there's two of them. What? Like one of them was in Bones. I just found out about this. The TV show Bones. She's, oh. she's Bones. Oh. Uh, and... Uh, other one is in 500 days of summer and others they're in other stuff too but anyway um and i can't remember he's one of those three name guys is the is the guy he's got like goes by like the three name he goes by three names instead of just one but i can't remember or instead of to like first last. done a very poor job of telling me what movie this is i don't i don't joseph actually... gordon levitt okay <laughs> that's his name i don't need to, i don't need to know what movie it is I, <laughs> yeah so maybe zoe deschanel and definitely joseph gordon levitt is those are the actors have you got any homebrew <laughs> i think i'm gonna need a little homebrew after after this it's a good movie you should watch it you know no maybe you shouldn't it doesn't matter you don't have to watch i don't it. i don't really watch movies no no like i i, I don't watch them on my own so I love watching movies. My favorite thing to do is to go to the movie theater by myself. I and watch a film. If if I had mm-hmm. ninety plus minutes of time relaxing and doing something like that that wasn't like fully engaging to my brain, mm-hmm. I would go insane. I would completely explode. I huh. I could not do that because I know that I am wasting these 90 minutes that I should be using productively. Uh, maybe that's what's different about it for me because it does feel productive to me. It does not. Nothing feels productive to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, unless it is No, we could talk about it another time. Cool. Um Full disclosure, I didn't have any homebrew until like before the episode started. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, so I just found something that I found the first thing that stood out to me and I didn't read it at all. So let's see what it is. It comes from user Belarusis. Uh, and it is the way of the diamond body. It's a monk. Who gets subclass. real hard. Su- monk subclass. Mm-hmm. So first thing, first note, iron body. You learn how to make your body strong as iron. So at third level, Mm -hmm. if you're wearing no armor, which you don't as a monk, and wielding no shield, which you don't as a monk, your AC is 10 plus your dexterity plus your constitution. Whoa. That's a lot. That could be really high. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, well, yeah, I mean, depending on what you point, put your points into, yeah. Uh, when you hit a target with an unarmed strike, you can spend a key point for extra damage equal to your martial arts die. Mm. Oh, wow. So you can roll an extra martial arts die for a key point. That's pretty good. Um, uh, once per turn. And when you take damage, you temporarily harden your body to withstand it. You can use your reaction... And you use your rea- one one key point and your reaction to reduce the damage equal to two martial arts die plus your proficiency bonus plus your constitution modifier. So this is about balancing key points for offense and defense a little bit. Yeah, I think so. Feels like. But you can't use that feature for psychic damage. That makes sense. And I assume maybe some other kinds too, but specifically psychic damage yeah maybe force might not well no it should force damage is the thing where like basically nothing gives you resistance to it Mm -hmm. but if you have shield 
you can eliminate all damage from it. No, that's not shield. That's or that's magic missile that it cancels. It doesn't cancel force damage. Oh, right, right. Mm. It cancels magic missile entirely. Yeah. But not force damage. But magic missile magic does missile. force damage, which is why I thought yeah. that. But uh, okay, yeah, you're right. You're but yeah, right. usually yeah, usually magic missile specifically it basically you can't block. At sixth level, you have advantage on saving throws and ability checks uh, against being forced to move, being knocked prone, being restrained, and being grappled. Hmm. That would be useful sometimes. Yeah. So if somebody casts like Thunder Wave to like knock you back, you uh, just be like, no, I'm buff. No, I'm hench. <laughs> That's a callback. Um, also at sixth level you can use your action to spend three key points uh to stomp the ground really hard every creature within 15 feet of you makes a dexterity saving throw uh on a failure they take five martial arts die of bludgeoning damage and are knocked prone jeez that's a lot um or half as much and not prone on a successful save. The ground in that area becomes difficult terrain until cleared. Hmm. Which each five earth bending style. Yeah, pretty, pretty much. Yeah. Basically it says that every five foot section requires a minute to clear a minute of whatever. Um, at 11th, <laughs> a minute of whatever, hard labor, whatever you want to call it. At 11th level, uh, bonus action, spend two key points, uh, and then you have resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage for one minute. Huh. And you gain AC equal to the number of key points that you used and temporary hit points equal to the number of key points you used times five. Ooh. See, this is what, so, sometimes these, these um, become a little bit too complicated. I, right. I feel like yeah. that was a little bit too complicated. Yeah, it, it's like, it, and it's fine too. Which is like, okay, like some people want that. that. Yeah. You, yeah, you could absolutely use that. It's just that, um, yeah, it, it adds like, a mechanic on top of a mechanic almost it feels like or right. i don't know it, it, i think things like that that have a lot of layers to them are a lot more easily exploited yeah. um uh, as well oh and then if you if you are forced to make a wisdom saving throw you can replace you you can make a constitution saving throw instead whoa <laughs> that's pretty oh, intense this is, yeah i guess most monks would be would wisdom be wi and dexterity. wisdom dexterity but this one looks like it's constitution dexterity constitution yeah constitution dexterity so for sure. the, the, i guess the idea of this is that this monk is gonna fight them head on yeah yeah that's it yeah it's that's the main idea is like carly's favorite anime character <laughs> type <laughs> To be fair, it's one of the best anime. It's one of the best types. anime character types. You catch the new, the newest uh, One Piece chapter. I don't read the manga, so no. But We're about to get some good stuff. I'm sure we are. <laughs> one Piece is good. Well, it, it, it's tough with the manga because some chapters are like this book, where it's just like all over the place. So many characters doing like nothing. Nothing. For yeah. The whole chapter. Right. Uh, and then other chapters are like, whoa. So. so much stuff it's so dense yeah. so dense every shot i feel like if you watch it as a sh as as the anime and you don't watch any filler it would all be a lot more action-packed but i don't remember for sure at 17th level <laughs> all right this is the last last couple bullets here at the end of your turn uh you can you can just remove th uh, a stun or paralysis that is on you. If you are stunned or paralyzed, you can just be like, nope, not anymore. Nice. Um, you ignore 
negative effects of exhaustion. Well, of, oh, of one point of exhaustion. Oh, it's kind of like that feat yeah, that yeah. we did before. Yeah. So if you're at level one, it's like nothing, and then level two is like one. Yeah. And you gain resistance to psychic damage. Oh, finally, finally. And your and you get strength strength of mind that prevents others from seeing into your thoughts or intentions. Interesting. Hmm. So that's when the psychic wall goes up, and you're like solid inside and out. Yeah, they have. Um, I I, I don't actually know if these are Chinese or Japanese characters. Maybe you would know, but they they have like a like a title for each of these sections, mm -hmm. iron body, weight of stone, foot earthquake, hardness of diamond, and then diamond sutra. But maybe, maybe you know a little bit more about what those characters are all about. I'm going to crack my back real fast. Oh yeah. You guys like um, the sound of that? Can you hear that on there? These are oh. all, they look like traditional Chinese. I can't tell the difference, so but, um, you would know better than I would. Yeah. The only reason I think they look like traditional Chinese is because of, well, the foot earthquake one mm -hmm. in, in particular looks like a very complicated characters to say foot earthquake. Uh, in Japanese, I think it would be like Ashi something. Uh, the word for earthquake is still one character, but the character for foot is not that complicated uh but okay okay wait wait weight of stone also does not say weight of stone it says like ten thousand pound stone or something so they might not so be might, literal translations yeah they might be different things yeah yeah but yeah cool I like the extra effort to add some, you know, some Asian some flair. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's nice. I, it, it's well, it's well made. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say. Yeah. And there was just that one little section that seemed like a little bit too complicated. If that could be simplified, I think it would be a lot better. Yeah. But some people don't mind complicated stuff, and if you like math and like remembering rules then there we go that's good for you yeah i think the maybe we'll talk about it in another episode like how to tell if a rule is too complicated or too simple when you're making homebrew yeah that's, and i have a great analog for that actually so maybe we'll talk about that yeah on the next episode on the next episode